So it's called I am P2P and um, it's supposed to be an, an self-explanatory um, software uh, built on whole chain. Uh, it's kind of like, um, Kind of like an introduction to to just P2P technology and um, kind of showing itself um, uh, how it works. Um, so yeah, it says, uh, uh, welcome to I am P2P, which is me, the software you've just downloaded and opened. My purpose is to tell you a bit more about myself and other P2P peers like me. I mean, this is the purpose of my makers, which is, us as Berlin, which is now my purpose too, if that makes sense. You know, I think that we are a little less known to people using technology. It feels a bit lonely. Maybe you would find me interesting or perhaps intriguing or useful, or maybe not, and that's okay too. Are you ready to dive in? Um, so, then we have uh, three components in the app, converse, play, and glossary. Uh, in the converse section, uh, you have kind of like a fake chat bot uh, function, uh, which based on your amount of knowledge about peer-to-peer uh, -peer or just like uh, in general, um, uh, data infrastructure, uh, you can choose um, an answer or a question uh, and you can engage with the, with the app itself. For example, um, uh, what would you choose, David, based on this question? What do you mean by peer-to-peer? -peer? Okay, what do you mean by peer-to-peer? -peer? <laughs> <laughs> okay that's the only choice right now great uh, can you explain a bit about this client server model and how you're different from that model most likely all the websites you know are hosted on a centralized uh on a centralized data server follows a client server model same with Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud, etc. Call themselves cloud. Most web content search engines, uh, tools like FTP, they're all based on client server model. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer model or um, a person or computer is both supplier, server, and consumer client compared to the dividedness of supply and supply and consumption resources in a client server model. And Pega drew these little pictures even to incorporate uh, into this um, uh, into this and kind of share the pictures and give people just that really basic kind of idea of like what's what's different about this here. Um, so your next option is, okay, I think I'm getting it a bit more now. What are the implications of these type of networking architecture in P2P? Okay, so then we talk about the implications and we get to um, uh, go into like whatever implications are more interesting for so us. They would, which one would you like to know more about? I like to know some, uh, something else. Uh -huh. Sorry? Okay. Uh, or, or the, oh, something else. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh my <laughs> <laughs> that, you, you took the shortcut to the end. <laughs> so that's the that's the system. Is this this funny little um this funny little game of kind of like cool. we created like a little tiny little decision tree, right? Um, yep. You just let you just go through and it plays the it plays the part like it's it's the whole thing is very limited in scope it was kind of the point of the fellowship like it was it was not extensive in a lot of ways it was to sort of um it was to sort of 
even start to put together uh, a direction that you could take um, or something like that, or way, ways of um, ways of educating people or that kind of thing. So, so we kind of like, I mean, most people did something totally different than what um, what you did, which was uh, they they created videos. Most people's things were were videos and not like an app. Um, <laughs> so it was it was uh, it was a fairly ambitious thing to undertake, kind of just creating even an app, even in a very very simple one. Um, yeah. And so uh, so yeah, we kind of limited what uh, yeah. how far we went with it. Um, yeah. So it's a very a small scope sort of app but it's kind of like an introductory kind of thing uh for people who are not familiar with p2p mm -hmm. um so there is uh two other uh components uh in the app too play and glossary uh i'll just go to glossary mm -hmm. next because shorter mm -hmm. um so there are some um oh yeah like terms uh that relates to data infrastructure and peer-to-peer uh, -peer technology that might just be kind of like difficult for people to understand. Um, so there's a little like glossary that we put up together um, and uh, from left to right, it becomes uh, more detailed. Um, so on the left side, we have like protocol, like very like yeah, general broad yeah. concept and then uh to the right that you go like you have more more detailed or more uh a smaller uh scoped uh term on the kind of innermost layer you see like stuff like distributed hash table and source chain it's like it's, it's kind like of very so, like, it's so deep in terms of yeah. like what you have to have first kind of thought about maybe at least a little bit in order to maybe make start to make sense of um, some of those parts that it's are kind of like reverse engineering, yeah. like, yeah. like, okay, as a programmer, like as someone who writes Holochain, like would know like something like the DHT or like source chain, but yeah. then like, how would you go back for someone that doesn't know how even like the, the basics of data infrastructure works? Like, how do you bring it back? And then like, uh, bring so, them in. So each of these is actually a, a clickable, expandable kind of like thing that you can look at that, um, look at that definition and scroll, uh, and scroll through it kind of. Um, and these definitions are also, um, because the glossary is here, you're actually kind of linked from uh, those places in the chat into the glossary so that people can have that um, kind of depth of exploration at their own at their own pace as part of the education um, process. Cool. Um, and then so we have a little game component. This play. is the little currency, um, the little currency component. Um, if you were uh, just starting, uh, this and hadn't kind of like, it was just you, you get kind of this option, join a game or start a game. So you're kind of like, yeah, you're either there because someone invited you or you're there as kind of an initiator and you're going to start a, a little game that other people are going to join. Mm -hmm. So the, the kind of like, for, for, for those who know the, the Holochain like terminology and stuff like that, each time that you create a game, technically it's creating a, a, a distributed hash table. It's creating like its own private space where you're only seeing, um, you, you're only seeing the peers who are in your game. You're not seeing kind of like everyone who has ever downloaded the app. So it was a conscious design decision that we made to make it so that this wasn't like, this wasn't just like a, um, a kind of a big pool, an impersonal pool of people um, that that kind of you might randomly show up into. It was more like the idea that you could almost even have a little bit of a kind of viral, not like broad viral, but just like this simple aspect of inviting your friend uh, to download the app and to play and that you would give them. Um, so this invite a friend means that you give them this secret key uh, and that's that's someone's way to kind of join the game if they 
uh, if they download it. And what that means is you're joining that private, that DHT uh, network of the game that someone in particular started. So uh, yeah, so everyone uh, that starts the game or joins the game, they are given uh, a, a fictional currency, 100s of that, uh, which is called cat credits. It's just like a funny name. Uh, but um, so yeah, so everyone starts with 100 cat credits in their wallet and you can just test out how how chain works uh, by um, giving or getting some of these cat credits. Uh, uh, and then you can see your wallet history here. So um, like, if I want to send um, 10 cat credits to Connor, you can quickly see how um, Paul Chain is functioning here. Um, and then now it's sent to Connor. Yeah. And Connor can see now that he received 10 cat credits from me. We can, see, his... we can see the reverse kind of um, the reverse action as well, which will be, uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and by me sending it, it will appear kind of instantly. It sends something like 12 or something. Yeah, oh yeah. So now I yeah. instantly got the 12 cat credits. Uh, from Connor and it shows on my balance. So, so that's happening. Um, that's happening over one of the um, Holochain proxy servers for networking. Um, not it was one that we spawned up um, separately. Actually, it's the same one as we use for Acorn, just because they were they were using the same version of Holochain at the time. Um, and so, yeah, just using one of the proxy servers to um, to make sure that people don't have any kind of um, local, I don't know, networking, networking issues. And then, yeah, we were using the signals for how it sends um, whole chain signals for the kind of instant aspect, um, so that sh so that people see those th that information instantly. You saw um, you received twelve cat credits. That was like the moment that I did took that action on the other computer so the signals are the very fast part um and then but it's also propagating that um that little transaction in the dht as well which is the more resilient um i mean it's yeah it's the one that persists the the data of the transactions um and uh this is like a little activity history and we made it so you could clear these um kind of clear these and it's just kind of showing you like what happened it's kind of fun to see like uh when someone also joins the network you see um you see them okay, yeah like, what's aware. that based on um that's based on when you realize that there's a new peer basically like cool. you know someone okay mm -hmm. like someone as soon as there's a new profile, basically, um, in the that it can pick up in the DHT, it's going to show you their avatar, and it's going to show you this little, um, it's going to show you this little thing. And so, yes. if it's your first time, and that that happens instantly too. Um, mm -hmm. So, if it's your first time, you're going to immediately see this, like, oh, because there was some interesting stuff about um, the moment when. Uh, like it sort of requires both people to actually be online at the same time. And this is one of the differences from like say cloud infrastructure and stuff like that. For, for the second person to join the game, uh, the first person needs to be online. So what you actually require is this tight coordination between the person who makes the invitation and the person who receives the invitation and wants to accept it. Because um, in order to know that they've successfully joined this game that the other person has, it actually needs that other person to be online um, at the time when they try to join it. So, and that's only true for the first person. And then 
these are sort of shows you the principles of peer to peer and the principles of a DHT is that like the more people that there are, the fewer you would need, the, the more likely that there would be someone else online when someone new tries to come online. Um, but just the fact that there's a dependency on at least one person being online for someone new to come online sh shows you an interesting little property of peer to peer that's not true about, um, yeah. that's not true about like the cloud. Yeah infrastructure um so yeah that's am p2p 